Greetings, Acolyte, and welcome back to the Ordo Grigio, the Emperor's secret society against the enemy that is unpainted models. In this video, we're going to be looking at how long it takes to paint an Imperial Guard platoon from this to this. So let's get going with the lightest of the speed paints I'm using today. Army Painter Speed Paint Zealot Yellow. I'm starting with this colour as it's the lightest of the speed paints and I figured it would be easier to hide overspill from this with the darker shades later on, though this didn't necessarily work out. While I'm cracking on with this, it's worth going through the actual infantry platoon itself. The Astro Militarum, or Imperial Guard, are a mix of horde and armour, and the infantry side core is infantry platoons. Each platoon consists of a command squad and 2-5 to five infantry squads of 10 guardsmen each. Now as the 3rd edition campaign on painting these four starts at 400 points, I've included a 3rd squad and some heavy weapons to push this platoon to just under 400 points, including a sanctioned psyker attached to the platoon command squad. The paint scheme I'm painting here is almost identical to in my previous video on the Praetorian Guard, with a couple of changes which we'll cover later on. But this will be the basis for the entire regiment, as with all the other models so far on this channel, this platoon was printed on my Anycubic Photon Mono 4K 3D printer, and I actually paid for these files as they suited my needs perfectly. Honestly, I'm glad I got into the 3D printing when I did, as it's opened up so many options, and for someone who opts from project to project, it's really handy to have models printing in the background, and it actually works out fairly cheap in comparison to purchasing the official models. Now obviously there's IP issues and I'd never be able to take this army to an official GW event, however I'm playing 3rd edition 40k in my house, so it's very unlikely I'm looking to attend GW events. So let's look at it as if you just got in the hobby and decided you want to play Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum, and for this I'll use UK prices current at the time of recording. We'll disregard the cost of paints, hobby accessories etc, as they'd be equal whether you're printing or assembling the models from Games Workshop. We start with the army I've got here, a nice simple 400 point recce platoon with an attached psyker for the beginning of a campaign. To make these you would need 3 Cadian shock troop boxes at £30 each, so there's 90 quid right away. However, best I can tell, they don't come with a heavy weapon option anymore. Back in the day they'd include heavy weapons teams. So for your 4 heavy weapons teams you'd need to buy 2 boxes of heavy weapons, again at 30 quid a box, Totals up to 120 quid now. You want a decent officer model as you're not up for converting, so you might as well get the command squad box £27.50. For your psyche, you're left with the option of converting or using spares, which you will have plenty at this point, or paying another £19 for a primary psyche. This means your one troop's choice is now £166.50. That's a lot of money for a single troop's choice. Now for the 3D printed option. The STL files cost me £34 and a penny, though you could find free STL files on the site I use. To print this army took me less than a kilo of resin, but if you're starting out you'd still have to buy the resin, and it's £25 for a kilo next day on Amazon, though that would probably do you at least two platoons. The printer itself cost me £189.99, again from Amazon, and that's a total of £249 buy-in, just over 80 quid more for a single platoon. However, for two platoons, printing would still cost you £249. Worst case scenario, if a lot of prints failed, you'd be £275. But once you get past the initial cost of the printer itself, the more you print, the cheaper it gets. I know that printing models and messing with resin isn't everyone's cup of tea, I just thought it would be worth explaining one of the reasons why the majority of the models you'll see on the channel are 3D printed. I do have a large collection of official GW models that might even be older than some of the people who watch this, but the ability to be inspired by a 3D model and then print it off and paint it very much appeals to me, so much that I actually have ordered a second printer though, judging by the way it's coming from Amazon and the tracking information, it doesn't look like it'll arrive so I'm probably getting a refund. Diversion aside, let's get back to the painting at hand. So for painting a large number of models, the best step I've found is to be organised, which anyone who knows me in person will probably find that quite ironic, though it really does help. 
So before I started this, I organized my paints so I knew where they all were and which ones I was going to be using. Good thing I had a video with near enough the exact scheme I was painting. And you'll probably notice a few models in the top right that were at various stages of the scheme where I tried it out before fully painting a model on the other video. I have the models set up in movement trays so I can move through the squads model by model, one painting stage at a time. This way hopefully no models get missed, though because you're going back to the model multiple times, you should spot anything you've missed before you get to the end of the painting session. And let's face it, this happened a few times and I went back in with previous colours and rectified it, but it is what it is. So if you've seen the other Imperial Guard video or the Dawnian Heresy Plague Marine videos, you may remember me saying that the models so far have been for an up and coming 3rd edition 40k campaign where the Praetorian models are representing the 132nd Garbachian Rifles. These devout royalists hold themselves accountable to their planetary governor and monarch, Queen Elizabeth XXII, and as part of their military structure, many platoons and companies are accompanied by royal princesses, their lineage granting them psychic powers. Though it is yet to be established if the bloodline gives rise to the psychic phenomena, or if female psychers are brought in and given the title of princess, as yet none have laid claim to the throne since the rise of Elizabeth the 22nd. I'll be honest with you, this is the part of painting models I like the least. I find it so boring. Hey look, I'm painting red. Oh, I'm painting red. Oh, I'm painting red. Oh, um, you get the picture. Let's face it, there's nothing glorious about batch painting, and it becomes a real slog real quick. Two hours in and you've covered maybe two colours. None of the models are anywhere near done and it's just dawning on you how much work you've taken on. You're asking yourself, why did I decide to do this? Why did I choose Imperial Guard, where one's troop choice can have over 60 models? Why am I still planning on a second faction of Orcs, even as I record the voiceover, knowing just how long this took me to paint? Oh wait, that's me. But time moves on. You take a break and switch up the music or podcast you're listening to. You start shutting down the outside world and fall into a state of flow. The initial fatigue is passed and you're settling in. The rhythm is set and you're moving from model to model, applying a layer and moving on. You've put too much time in to give up now, and you're pretty sure that you're not far from the halfway point, even if you're totally wrong about this. Slowly, as the next few hours pass, the models start to come together. You can see what they look like, even if it's in your mind, and you actually begin to look forward to finishing the models, and not just so you can put your brush down. You're getting a sense of what compromises or embellishments you'll make for the finished product balancing it out against the time any extra steps will take. It was at this point in the painting I made the decision to change out the step for the weapons, using Army Painter Speed Paint Dark Wood for the LAS rifles. This would realistically only add a few minutes to the overall painting time, however would add some visual distinction between the brown of the leather and the brown of the wood. Also, as old school British soldiers, how could they turn down some rich, rich mahogany? Mahogany. After about 7 hours of painting, you realise your 6 hour estimate was way off, and you're painting your life away. Although, you did kind of choose this when you picked the hobby. You've realised that whilst the extra detail on the models look really good and show off the capabilities of the 3D printer, they can be an absolute pain to paint, especially buttons and buckles, and you're questioning your decisions to paint them. Now it's probably worth mentioning that I did this over two days, with around seven hours on day one and the remainder on day two. I thought it would take around six hours to paint the platoon and, well, I was wrong. So I did what any iron-willed servant of the Emperor would do and decided to go have a lie down and come back to it the next day. Another couple of hours and you realise you're on the way up, there's less stages left to paint than already painted and you can see the army at the end of the tunnel. Some people may react to this boost in morale by perhaps sticking on some 2000s metal classics and singing along very badly to at least a third of the words because you forgot the rest. I think I need the models are really taking shape now, and you're on the home straight. At this point I had less than half a lead belcher left, some retributor armour for brass details, sandry dust on the base and two washes, so for the most part you could see the finished product. Time flew by with the invigoration of the approaching finish line, and I powered through the final stages, completing the metallics, layering the base, applying Agrax Earthshade on the metallics and cloth, 
then a Thonian camo shade onto the base for that mossy sandstone look. Then it happens. The last base receives the last squash. You place the model down in sigh of sigh relief. It took you almost twice as long as you thought. Over two days you put in over 11 hours of brush time. And you now have an infantry platoon that looks a bit like this. So as you can see, we now have an Imperial Guard reconnaissance platoon ready to investigate the anomalies detected across the marshy world of Gabaccia, unaware of what horrors await them at the hand of the invading forces. As always, I hope you've enjoyed the video, if you have any suggestions stick them down in the comments section, and I'll see you all next time.